to get flowing. Can't take forever. No. But yeah, if this has, because there's, there's a 20 psi of hydraulic pressure pushing yes. on, which could blow open the seals. Take build stop. Welcome back everybody to part three of the DIY resin transfer molding video series. This time we're figuring out how to do this without the vacuum bag. This is the kind of the ultimate uh, end game of this project here where we come up with a pretty nice, really clean solution for making these parts. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have these two end caps on here and then we have to seal the edge of the mold. The mold already has two O-ring grooves, so all we're gonna really need are these 3D printed end caps, and we'll seal that up with gum tape, and then hopefully the O-rings will provide the uh, sealing around the perimeter of the part. I've got both of my printers running here. The Voron V0 is printing an end cap, while I've got a core part printing in the Ender 6. Now we're making another bladder and another trick to try is turning the bladder inside out. This is something I would do with uh, proper bladder molded parts. And so you see it, you can leave like a kind of a kind of a reservoir tip on there. And that allows for the bladder to have a little bit of uh, expansion, a little bit of room to sort of grow out if needed. And also can prevent uh, having pressure buildup or pressure concentrations on the seam. So now I'm prepping the exhaust, the outlet side, and I'm just using some gum tape here to hold the tube in place and also to seal it. And now I'm adding the tape around the inside of the exhaust end cap. So this is what's going to seal the bladder in place. This is pretty fiddly to work with. I wish I had a larger diameter and in hindsight, there is a way to redesign this tooling so, it, so that it does have a larger diameter, but you know what, maybe on the next project. So now I'm just applying the tape to the bladder to try to get it to seal in place. I'm just kind of randomly mashing it in place here. This is not a good way to do this as you can get a bunch of little micro creases in the bag, which all can leak. And I'm sure as anybody who has experience with vacuum bagging can relate to. Okay, now just adding the tape around the perimeter of the flange here. This is what's gonna seal the end. And I guess I should mention now what I'm doing is I'm just doing a pressure test, uh, a dry run, literally, to see uh, to see if it can actually pull a vacuum on the mold here. This is good to uh, you know introduce one new thing at a time rather than just assume it's going to work with you know with epoxy wet it out and make a whole mess. So this is a dry run. We're going to see if we can actually pull a vacuum. More gum tape around the perimeter of the exhaust and the bladder. Now I'm prepping the inlet side, the airfoil shape. We push the inlet tube through and then seal it again with more gum tape. And then again, gum tape on the flange. Get that pressed into place good and then I will add the hose clamp on the end and let's pull a vacuum or try and pull a vacuum. Here's the completed setup. Now I've got the vacuum pump running and I'm listening and I can definitely hear it leaking. So I'm trying to just kind of press gum tape down and looking for the source of the leak. At this point, I'm assuming it's coming from the bag or the way the, the bag exits here because of all those just random wrinkles, right? So that's kind of my main focus. But it would turn out to be not that not to be necessarily the case.
I assume that the bag, the bladder, was the source of the leaking, and even if it wasn't, it was still in not a very ideal solution, so I found these poly bags on Amazon. These are normally used for, like, shipping goods, you know, just putting stuff in that you would little bits of screws or whatever. Um, so it's not really vacuum bagging material, but I figure it would probably work for this application, especially because they're already sealed on three sides and we don't really need super high pressure. So we will try this. Now I'm applying the vacuum bag sealing tape to the bag this time instead of the inside of the end cap. See if this works a little bit better. And I'm also here, you can see what I'm doing is folding a neat sort of V-shaped uh, pleat. This is to reduce the circumference of the bladder so that it'll fit inside the uh, end cap flange here much neater. So we have a much neater application. I won't have random uh, wrinkles in the bladder uh, while it's, uh, where, where the sealing surface is. So now I'm just working everything into place and you can see here already how much, how much neater this is and it's much easier to just ensure that everything is really pressed down and sealed with the gum tape. Now I'm adding more little bits of gum tape just around the exhaust tube just to make sure that those surfaces are all sealed. And you can also see what I've done is I've super glued a little piece of the breather cloth material over the exit uh, tube, exit hole of the tube to, um, you know, just like you would have in a normal resin infusion setup so you have an air path and so things don't clog up the or plug up the exhaust tube. Setup is complete and we are going for test number two of just seeing if we can pull a vacuum on the tool and I can hear it leaking. And you can see on the vacuum gauge here, I'm not able to get a full vacuum. So it turned out it was leaking at the hose clamp. So I added some gum tape there, but I could also identify leaks around the perimeter. So of course, those O-rings I had in there were not adequate. And so now you can't hear any leaks and the, the bladder seems to be doing its job good. And you can see there is a full vacuum, minus 30 inches of mercury, so it should be good to go. Another upgrade we made to the process is we switched to using this heavy 12K tri-weave carbon fiber fabric. This reduces the ply count from eight plies per side to only three, which makes for much less manual labor in this part, the cutting of the plies, and also makes the layup process go much quicker and easier. Another tweak to the process is I'm using just a very small amount of epoxy around the perimeter of the mold cavity, just, just enough to tack the plies in position. I realize I probably don't want an excessive amount of epoxy in there because if it starts to harden or just get really tacky, then I could have trapped air uh, along the surface, which would probably lead to surface imperfections. I'm also checking to make sure that the weave pattern, the diagonal pattern, will align with the tubes where the parts will be mating. And then the layout process is pretty much exactly the same as all the other parts. Oh, just the stiffness of that thing. Trim it and I'm pulling it. Oops, it easy. Okay, this one. Let's go. 
-hmm. Here's the oversized ply that will form the lap joint. And you can see I'm making a series of cuts. This will allow the material to fold over on itself. And this is a little bit messy, something that we will improve on on the next one. Again, making sure that the weave will align on the top of the part. And repeat pretty much the same layout process for the top half of the mold. And then the core goes in just like with the other parts. And now we do the lap using the epoxy to try to stick. And the this 12K material here is pretty stiff and just really doesn't like to fold around, especially tight corners. So this was pretty messy and kind of crappy, but it ended up working out, but we have a much better solution you'll see coming up. Despite the sloppiness, we are pretty much able to just kind of mash everything in there and get the mold closed. With the mold closed, the bladder is then inserted into the cavity. Now it's really important that you get the bladder in there as neatly as possible and without twists and folds. And I don't really show that very well here, but you kind of want to stick some uh, something down on the inside there to kind of make sure it's spread out evenly. Like inches, how much um, you need, or you want to just do it better? Cause then you just go over the whole perimeter of the mold with gum tape here to make sure any possible points of air ingress are sealed up nice and tidy. The mold is closed and sealed, so we'll make sure we can pull a vacuum before we start mixing the full batch of epoxy. Before I mix, or should I start mixing? Start mixing and I'll, I'll do the pot. You can see things are looking pretty good, so we'll actually kill it and do a drop test. And this is good, so we'll go ahead and start adding epoxy. About 20 PSI in the pressure pot. Yes, Beautiful. And then we purge the air out of the pressure pot. We got this little butterfly valve on here, so we'll just open this up and blow out the air that's in the line until we see epoxy start to flow, then shut it off, then we'll hook up the mold. And then start to flow epoxy into the mold. I'm gonna slow it down once it gets to the part because I don't want the hydraulic pressure of this to blow it to over. Ram it, yeah. yeah. Let us know it's flowing. Yeah. At what point are we going to start seeing? Yeah, it would be nice to be able to see how much resin you have. Yes. Uh, and or be able to know, you know, when it's starting to set up. Right. Like if you had a temperature sensor on there and it starts going really hot. We're starting to see it here. Is it coming out? Oh, okay. That's a pretty minor leak, but it is a leak nonetheless. Yeah, so we closed off. Yeah. And we'll let the vacuum just go ahead and work. 
So the mold is filled and we're starting to get the uh, foamy epoxy and pulsing air bubbles coming out of the exhaust. Now we do have this leak down here. Not really sure why that happened. Uh, maybe it's just too much hydraulic pressure from the pump and the seals can't really take it. But as long as air isn't leaking in, I'm fine with a little bit of epoxy leaking out. You can see just put a little plastic bag down there to uh, so that it doesn't glue itself to the table. Then we decide it's finished, so we clamp it off and let it cure overnight. Come back the next day and take everything apart and let's get this thing out of the mold. The demolding process is super clean and easy now without the vacuum bag and without an excessive amount of epoxy leaking out on the outside of the mold. It just kind of comes apart here. Oh, yes, sir. That looks like a resin infusion part. Holy smokes. This part looks pretty darn good. And you can see the bladder mostly comes out here. I'm really pleased with how this turned out. You kind of twist and pull to get the bladder to come out. And you'll see it pretty much entirely comes out except for the end where it's kind of pinched off. And I'll try to give you a view of the inside. So there's the, there's the bladder removed. And I'm super pleased with this part. Here it is mostly cleaned up. You can see we've got some voids on the end there, but we don't care about that. That's gonna be you know bonded inside of, of the tube. So that doesn't matter but the surface looks really nice. We've got hollow mostly on the inside. There's a few voids on the surface here. And I'm thinking at this point, it's probably those imperfections are due to the fact that we're not using a proper infusion epoxy. So I really want to get some of that in the future. Give that a try. There you can see inside there, we've got a nice, pretty nice looking hollow part. Okay, the process is working great, so let's move on and make another part this time, improving the layup. So here I'm using masking tape on the edges of the plies. I realized that these edges won't be seen anyways because they'll be bonded inside the tube, so let's put some tape on them to help keep the material from fraying during cutting and handling. It makes it much easier to work with. And here's the lap ply. This is the really tricky one. Now you'll see what I've done is I've put tape around the entire perimeter, including the cut pleat areas. And uh, that tape has been painted uh, with a, or colored with a black Sharpie. So if it does show through the laminate, it will hopefully be black and not blue. Oh. <laughs> Install the core and then to form the lap joint, we're actually just gonna use more masking tape here to hold the edges over. 
I mean, my days of working with pre-preg, you would actually just use little strips of cut pre-preg for this because it sticks like tape to itself. Then you'd have, you know, basically, well, literally a carbon fiber tape. So as far as I know, there's not really anything like that for a wet layup or a dry layup process like this. If there is, let me know in the comments about that product. That would probably be really nice to have. But we're using masking tape here, and the rationale is that'll be fine because the tape is really just um, but sitting next to the mandrel and not um, in between the laminate where it would compromise the strength. And the strength isn't really that important with these parts anyways. So let's go ahead and get this one cured up and out of the mold. Mold pops right open, pretty clean process and a repeatable process. Repeatability is really important when trying to make, well, when doing manufacturing, repeatability is very important. So that's kind of what we're looking for here is having a consistent, repeatable process. This is probably the best looking part so far. The surface is very clean. Not 100% perfect, but for what we're working with, I'm really pleased. Again, most of the bladder material comes out. You can see it just kind of tears on the end where it's kind of pinched uh, and in the end where it shuts off there and we end up with a mostly hollow part. For kicks, I went back and made one more part, this time trying to do it like a pure infusion. I've got no pressure pot to see if this would work. I wasn't really sure if we needed the pressure pot before. So now this is not RTM molding. This is just straight um, resin infusion molding. This actually ended up working just fine, although it did seem to take a bit longer to fully saturate the laminate I'm thinking if it, if the part was any bigger or any you know thicker laminate or something like that, then maybe that's when the pressure pot, the RTM process would really be necessary. So for these this size part, looks like the regular vacuum pressure is adequate for getting uh, the part fully saturated with resin. But in the future, if I was doing bigger parts, then well, having the pressure pot as a tool is uh, pretty darn good. And then we'll just do uh, another unboxing video because this is always the most satisfying part of making composites is seeing them come out of the mold. And the repeatability is strong. This part looks great, just like the previous one. Really pleased with the process and how these are coming out. Uh, I, I'm kind of disappointed now that we're basically done with all these parts. And now I want to make some more parts with this process, but I kind of don't really know what to work on next. But in any case, we've still got some more on this project to finish up. Okay, and here are all the molded components finished and ready for assembly. See the corner brackets looking pretty nice, along with the airfoil sections for the cross members. And here are the tubes. These are the 52 millimeter OD tubes that'll form the main longitudinal members. And then the 48 millimeter tubes that will be the sleeves to uh, connect the tubes together. 
and the corner brackets will get bonded into one of the 52 millimeter tubes. Here's the corner brackets dry fitted into the airfoil section so you can just see how the assembly looks. And once we get these bonded in place, we'll go ahead and do a final sanding and filling of the cracks to smooth everything out, make everything look good, and then do a clear coat to seal the surface and also just make an even surface finish on all the parts. And here's some extra mounting hardware we've been working on. These are adapter brackets, so the to mount the round tubes to the roof rack airfoil section with some U blocks like this. So the tube goes on like that, and then over the top is this U bracket. It'll go on the top like that, and then it will screw down into the factory roof rack. And lastly, we have these ID expansion clamp parts. These are 3D printed and then filled with resin to make them really strong and hard. They have a heat set insert with a set screw. These will get bonded into the 48 millimeter tubes. And then what we'll do is we'll split the tube right along here. So then when the 48 millimeter tube is inserted into the larger diameter tube and you tighten that set screw, it will spread and clamp itself in place. Okay, that is it for this one, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I may go ahead and do another video to just show you the assembly process and the final assembly of this project, but mostly these videos are about the molding, so I'm not sure yet. Either way, subscribe, like, all that stuff. Thanks a lot.